at times, it's easy to say that the Vancouver media is making a quote-unquote mountain out of a molehill. That is exactly the phrasing that Bruce Boudreaux used when talking about the J.T. Miller, Colin Delia banging on the back of the net type of thing. But I think when it comes to the Canucks media and this conversation, this isn't really a molehill at all. This might be an actually bigger thing that I think we have to start focusing on. Because when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks' most recent free agent pickup, the one that was the big fish, the guy that everybody wanted, but eventually settled down and chose the Vancouver Canucks, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to this player, and it all starts with walk it like I talk it, Rick talk it himself, baby. Let's talk about the Kuzmenko... Time on ice, let's talk about his overall play, let's talk about his placement in the lineup, and just what exactly Talkett has said about this guy the past little while that kind of indicates where the Canucks seem to be going with him and his development. So, Andre Kuzmenko, as we know, is a talented Vancouver Canucks goal-scoring, playmaking player that has had a really good season up until this point. Signed by the Vancouver Canucks as a free agent the recent offseason, he's got 45 points in 53 games played. On pace for 69 total points in an 81-game campaign, he had one game where he was scratched. On pace for 34 goals, he's currently at 22. And that's a pretty good year, all things considered, for a guy who has just made his debut in the NHL. I think it was Satir Shah, or it might have been Irfan Gaffar or somebody that tweeted it out, but like, it's kind of crazy how this is the best goal-scoring season Kuzmenko has ever had, and it comes in not his second, third, or fourth Russia year, it comes in his first NHL year. And a good chunk of that can be attributed to the positions that he has been played in. He plays with Petey. Petey's a very good offensive mind. Kuzmenko feeds off of that offense very well. They kind of complement each other, you know? Kuzmenko, when he doesn't have the puck, he's slithering into open areas of the ice, and a guy who is as talented as Petey with the offensive playmaking side that he has is able to find Kuzmenko with ease. They set themselves up for very nice on-the-rush plays. Kuzmenko has some very good talent when it comes to dangling guys out of position, and when he's coming on the fast break, he's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve that he can used to manipulate defenders and force lanes to the goal. Andre Kuzmenko is an offensive specialist, and you take a look at just the ability that he has in the zone, he is definitely one of the guys that stands out the most when you're just watching the game tape by itself. The reason for this is because Kuzmenko will go around and spin around guys. He creates space and lanes for himself through sheer power of will. And for the most part, playing with PD has sort of complemented this dare I say, run-and-gun type of formula. Kuzmenko finds himself in front of the net, he is able to tip it in, he's able to get rebound goals, he's been a very good player in the bumper spot on the power play, kind of roving as the net front guy and the guy down low. Bo Horvat was normally the trigger man in the slot, he's been replaced by Bavillier. So, Kuzmenko is at a pretty good thing going this season, but ever since Rick Tockett has come in, you've seen a lot less of Kuzmenko out there on the ice, and for a very particular reason. Take a look at Kuzmenko and his game log here on ESPN, and you can figure out that Rick Tockett has pretty much reduced his average time on ice by about two minutes a game-ish since the Boudreaux firing. Under Boudreaux, Kuzmenko was getting upwards of 19 minutes a game. Sure, not every game was 19 minutes, but there were a lot of 17, 18, 16 minute games thrown in there. Ever since Walk It Like I Talk It, though, you can see that he's got 12 minutes of time on ice per game, 12-17 against the Islanders, 10 minutes against the Red Wings the first time, and then last night he actually had 16 minutes of time on ice per game, and he started that game off on the third line. Now, he did get moved up to play with Petey towards the middle-ish part of that game, but at the same time, just acknowledging where he has been in this sort of pattern is, in and of itself, quite interesting. This is where we go over to some of the comments made by Rick Tockett regarding the team and its play. Let's go over the comments he made about Kuzmenko yesterday before the Red Wings game, saying we have to build a foundation for him. He's a good player, but there are aspects of his game to get where we want where we need him to be better. It's a long-term thing with him. 
And they talked about this on Sports on 650 yesterday, or two days ago, excuse me, after the first Red Wings game, how Kuzmenko is sort of being held accountable in a way that we haven't seen him be held accountable in the past, where Bruce Boudreaux was really willing to give Kuzmenko an opportunity to shine offensively because, hey, the guy is contributing offensively, he's getting points, so what more could you ask out of this guy? That's really what you brought him here to do. But it's apparent that Rick Tockett is a lot more focused on other details, not just being able to go out there and make a nice play or make a nice pass or score a nice goal, but to just make the right plays most of the time. Kuzmenko has a tendency to, whenever he has the puck on his stick, really try to force his hand to try to make something happen. He doesn't usually dump the puck in, which is understandable when you acknowledge that KHL hockey very much prohibits dump and chase styles at all. Kuzmenko will normally just either try to force himself into the zone, make a few spins, make a few dangles. Sometimes it works and it opens up space, sometimes it doesn't, and it just results in turnovers. It's apparent that Rick Tockett is sort of trying to iron out that latter part to Kuzmenko's game, where sometimes it would be the better play to just dump it in, instead of trying to go along the half-board shimmy-shammy your way by a guy and eventually just lose possession of the puck while you're caught down low on the wrong side of it. And yesterday, you saw a lot of spinning around from guys like Andre Kuzmenko and Connor Garland quite literally like spinning around, you know, like pivoting and trying to L2 their way by other Red Wings players. And as a result, you saw Rick Tockett say this post game. We're going to practice tomorrow, and we're going to have to go back to grade school on how to defend, how to stop and start, because too many guys are spinning. We have a very high-risk team. You know, in the road trip, I thought some parts of our game, I thought we got it. But then we get this high risk? And you know, some of the better players tonight, they're just too risky for me. Now, I don't know if Tockett is specifically talking about spinning, as in like, okay, Kuzmenko is literally spinning around the Red Wings defense trying to create space, or if he's saying that, okay, when the Canucks are in their own zone, they get caught on a standstill, puck watching, and they end up spinning around because of it. I'm not too sure what Tockett is referring to when he specifically says that comment, but the fact that he's literally calling out the better players of the team and saying that they're playing a pretty high-risk game Game, it kind of speaks to me that he's talking about those, let's just say, more ambitious offensive shifts where players like Garland or Kuzmenko are holding onto the puck in the offensive zone, trying to dangle their way and spin their way to the front of the goal, and just overall playing a pretty high-risk style. Because as we said, all it takes is one turnover, one pass reception, and all of a sudden the wings are going back the other way and Kuzmenko is on the wrong side of the play. Of course, I'm not 100% sure as to what Tockett is talking about, but in my mind that makes sense as to what a quote-unquote high-risk play seems to be. It sort of fits as well with the type of disciplining, or I guess you could say disciplining, yeah, that's a proper word, right? That Tockett has gone out there and done to Kuzmenko, limiting his ice time, not playing with Elias Pettersson, and trying to showcase that, hey, when you're not playing with a guy like Petey, you kind of have to be better in other areas of the ice. And I sort of feel like with Kuzmenko, there's a type of luxury that you can afford to sacrifice with him because he's so good offensively that you could just play him with Petey and say, all right, there, get points. Like, go out there, do your game, feed off your instincts because your instincts have served you well. It's just intriguing to me how Tockett is apparently on the other side of that where he's like, okay, you've got these good instincts, you can play with good players, but can you play away from them? Can you still be as effective of a hockey player when you don't have Elias Pettersson and when you don't have one of the best playmakers in the world feeding you the puck? Let's see how you play with Sheldon Dries. Now, in my opinion, I don't like how this is happening because I personally want to capitalize on the offense that Kuzmenko has, and the guy just signed an $11 million contract extension, so why not go out there and play the man? But... Walk it like I talk it is going to walk it like I talk it, I guess. You can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about how the Canucks are handling this Kuzmenko thing, his time on ice declining, his play away from Pedersen, how he actually got moved back into Pedersen's line towards the middle part-ish of the Red Wings game yesterday. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section about this entire ordeal. Talk it, Kuzmenko, Petey, the power play. He hasn't been played on power play one. That's mostly best for spot now. So it's very interesting to see how that's going down. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.